Hi folks, Daniel Myers, Developer Relations here at Snowflake. And on today's episode of Powered By, I'm talking with Ali Sadat, Senior Vice President of Product at Seismic. Seismic is a cloud-based sales enablement platform powered by Snowflake. Ali, how are you today? Great, thanks for having me. Awesome, so, you know, one of the first parts of this is I wanna learn more about your background and Seismics, right? What, how, how, and why does Seismic, uh, you know, exist, and and how has it been growing over the last several years? So I've been actually at Seismic for um, about five months. Um, I head up uh, platform and um, um, solutions for Seismic, and um, just a little bit of my my background. I came in through engineering, uh, went into product, um, did a couple of stints in uh, technical sales on the other side of the house, and then back in product. Now Seismic was. Um, uh, founded about uh, roughly um, about 10 years ago. And right now we're um, the number one sales and enablement um, platform. Um, I think uh, bar none, um, we're I think at least two and a half times um, larger than our uh, closest competitor. Um, we surpassed 200 million in ARR. Um, just uh, recently we announced that. Over 2000 customers and uh, 1200 employees and, and growing super fast. So Seismic um, actually has a very interesting story. The, the founders came out of the content management and, and document automation kind of world, but the kind of like the on-premise world and, and decided to build something in the cloud. And one of the first um, capabilities or products that they actually built was around content automation, a product we today would call Live Docs. And the goal of that was to enable companies to be able to generate documents um, off of templates really rapidly, but be able to modify those documents um, based on data and parameters that are actually being fed to it. So imagine like what salespeople do on a regular basis. You have a pitch deck. Um, everybody wants to personalize that pitch deck, for example, put the customer's logo on it, um, draw in a couple of use cases that pertain to that customer. And that's something we can actually just do with a click of a button. Once marketing kind of creates a pitch deck and all the use cases, all sales has to do is point it to the opportunity record, for example, in, in CRM. And boom, we we just generate it and, and save them tons of time in doing that. And the other aspect that marketing really likes is that it remains consistent with all the branding, everything that marketing wants um, salespeople to kind of do uh, without any effort. That's pretty powerful. I mean, it really seems like that type of story and that type of implementation really helps with the entire enablement life cycle from, you know, from the content creation to improvement later on to yeah. engagement. You know, to tell me a little bit how uh, you know that has evolved over time for Seismic. Sure. Um, so we, as we kind of grew um, and looked at uh, beyond content automation, we got a lot of pull from our customers to kind of help them out with with the entire life cycle of of enabling sales, um, make sure that the they acquire the skills. You know, like when a salesperson joins a company in the beginning. They know nothing about the company. They, you need to enable them, give them all the tools, and ramp them up really fast. Um, one of the biggest um, impediments to kind of sales and meeting your numbers is not having your salespeople know what they're going to be selling. Um, so we help them with all those aspects in terms of the content, um, the learning capabilities, uh, 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 upgrading or up-leveling their skills. And then what we also do is help customers now engage um, their buyers. Um, so when you share a piece of content um, through Seismic with your buyers, you actually have detailed and granular data in terms of how they engage with that content. And that's really powerful for salespeople. Now they actually know, if, first of all, if the buyer received their email, but beyond that, which a lot of companies do, did they open the document, which slides did they view, did they, how much time they spent on every single slide, and all that data from our, our own, like the salespeople using, the users using it, to the buyers using it, to how much time they spend on every slide, every little detail is actually stored and then analyzed. So then how do we actually improve it? And that's that's gold for, for marketing. They wanna know how people are actually using content and what content actually drives the best outcomes. Which, which customers end up buying and what content was sharing with them and then can they actually create a repeatable process or actually figure out how they need to improve it um, and then keep feeding that cycle again. That is really awesome. So it really seems like with that level of, of granular detail, the the possibilities of, of not just, you know, uh, working with marketing, but also like get, gathering some of that information and bringing it back to product, for example, you know, to, to improve, 
you know, the, their, your customer's product based off of the information that they're gathering from, from, you know, their customers looking at these decks and things like that. Pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's that's uh, key for us. I mean, obviously, like being being your product, um, data is everything. You want to know what your customers are doing. Um, and then same thing. I mean, that's the, the products that, uh, say, marketing creates is their content, right? So they want to see how that's being used. So there's, there's a multi-layer um, data gathering analysis kind of going on here. So that's really cool. So, Ali, let's see a demo of this. So let me um, kind of walk you through this. I've logged in as as a salesperson, so one of our primary um, users. And typically when I come into Seismic, I want to do several things. I want to look to see what's the latest content that marketing has created, what's the latest news out there, so I can actually scroll through this, this homepage, I can actually see some featured content. An app that's being created that I can actually share, um, sales pitch deck that I always use, um, some information about cloud computing, um, looks interesting, I'm going to take a look at that. And you can also see, see all kinds of different decks that I've actually used in the past. Uh, my C-level sales deck, um, all good stuff, all tools that I use all the time. I can also come in down here to Lessonly. It's a new acquisition we actually made. And this is where I can actually see what's out there for me to kind of learn. So I have a few, few minutes in the morning or a couple hours in the morning or whenever I have chance uh, on weekends and such. I can come out here and see what courses I can actually take and what I've actually completed, and, and in some cases, what's, what's been assigned to me that I actually need to kind of complete. And this could be a salesperson that's um, new to the company that's actually trying to learn this, but also a salesperson that's actually experienced, but product is always putting out new products, marketing is actually creating all new contents and, and messaging, and how do you actually keep up with that? So I can do all this from, from here. I'm gonna go back to the homepage. Now, I'm gonna go prep myself for a meeting uh, with one of my uh, prospects that I'm really excited to have a conversation with. So I'm gonna click on the sales pitch deck. And one of the things you can actually see is instead of seeing the pitch deck itself, it's uh, I see this form that says, well, what opportunity are you actually chasing right now? So I can actually say, well, let me pick the opportunities that I actually have. And this data, by the way, is coming directly from, from your CRM system. So it's not something that has to be um, stored in Seismic or created in Seismic. So it comes directly from my opportunities. As I pick the opportunity, the account information, the industry, all this information that was in CRM comes in um, directly in here. If I have a logo that I want to up, um, upload, you know, most of the time sales goes out there and wants to personalize the, the, the deck to the customer, adding their logo, all their information, as if it was 100% created for that customer. Go through a series of questions. In this case, I can pick some um, use cases. Because of the industry, we are autom automatically picked um, telecom co um, clients and some other um, use cases. If there's anything else I wanted to pick, I, I can go through the selection process and then click on generate. Now I click on generate. As I start doing this, it actually starts creating the uh, the the pitch deck, um, and it actually pulls in all the information from the various data sources that we actually have and prepares this for me to kind of send to my customer. You can actually see already the uh, the pitch deck has been been created. It's creating some of the previews and optimizing it, and uh, now actually done. Now when it opens up, now I have a pitch deck that in this case was prepared for Edge Communications, which was the account that I was going after, and it actually has all my information, plus it actually pulled in my information and the date. So in this case, I am Joe Demo, as in my demo use case, I'm the Joe salesperson, account executive, and I actually put in today's date. So everything looks good, perfect, I'm ready to go. From here, what I can actually do is share this content either via link or via a digital sales room with my prospects. Now, after this is created and sent to, to my prospects, the next thing I'm interested in is, do they open it? Are they going to actually engage with it? So I can actually go into all my engagements and see all the content that I've actually shared and, and who's looked at it. So I can actually see a few things that I've actually created, the uh, microsite that I kind of created. Here's a previously created content that I had shared with Edge Communications. About six views, not too bad. I can actually click into the analytics and pull in slide level or page level detail of how much time they spent with the content and how much time they spent on every single slide. As you see in this case, they didn't actually spend a whole lot of time on all the other slides. So I probably need to pick my prospect and, and nudge them a little bit to see if they have actually read the content, make sure that they actually engaged with it. But this is really critical information because half the time you send content to customers and you wonder, did they actually read it? Right. Did they spend any time with it or not? So this is really valuable data for, for salespeople. 
So you mentioned, right, the different personas, right, uh, between, you know, the customer of, of the prospect, you know, and uh, the marketing department. Right. You know, how does, how does something like this work, you know, as, as, a, as a marketing department user? So let me actually switch and log into the system as a marketing user. So this is this is gold for, for marketing. All the data that we collect on every engagement, on every um, deck that is actually shared um, or a piece of content that marketing actually creates is stored in, in, in Snowflake and we're actually able to kind of analyze this. So one of the things that marketing wants to know is what content is actually working, what's not working, what have their own sellers engaged with, and then what have they actually shared, and how much engagement was there from, from the buyers and down to what slide. Um, challenges, um, I mean, you've been in the industry for a long time. One of the challenges is that you put content out there and you're like, is anybody using it? Um, what was the right. last time actually anybody used it? And then how do I keep it fresh? And one of the things that sales wants to know is that they're always using the latest and greatest thing. So we provide all that content and all that data back into um, through analytics, through different um, ways back into marketing, so it can actually optimize the platform. So the whole process is, is a cycle of um, enable the salespeople, engage with the buyers, collect all the data to improve the content, the process, and, and the skills continuously. So now I've logged in as, as a marketing user. I'm going to go into the insights area and look at analytics. Now when I pull up the uh, dashboard over here, I'm going to look, I can look at things um, based on roles. So we have views of CMO wants to see perhaps a CRO, sales enablement, um, sales manager, and actually also a content owner. So different perspectives of the data. So I can actually look at things like content performance. And as I click on it, the dashboard fills up and you can actually see um, the, uh, all the performance, how much activity we've had, um, how many views we've actually had, um, usage um, across everything, and down to actually every every deck and every detail. How many times it's been sent, how many times it's been opened, um, the percentage open rates, the number of hours that people engaged with it, um, all that is available. And this is, again, this is a gold mine yeah. for, for marketing people. It's like they want to know what's been happening with their content. That is really powerful. So, you know, you mentioned, you know, that this is, is built on Snowflake and powered by Snowflake. Yes. What are some of the features of Snowflake that are critical to your platform? So one of the key features of Snowflake that we use is the uh, the, the data share and specifically the secure data share. Okay. So a lot of times our customers want access to all this data. Now, that would be, sure, we can actually have all kinds of APIs and they can hit our APIs all day long, but uh, what we've actually chosen to do is give them access to their own data. So they can actually log in and based on their users, um, we can actually filter down to what content they need to see based on their tenant and they can extract all that data, connect their own BI tools directly to Snowflake and create their own um, dashboards and analytics, uh, run any kind of ML um, uh, models, anything like that they want on top of it directly from, from Snowflake. Um, and that's, been, that's been huge for us. Um, we have a number of customers actually using it. Um, company comes to mind and um, I believe they're down in San Diego Biotech, a large company called Illumina. Um, they literally, like from what we can actually see from the usage, are logging in every single day to use the data. So that to me is a key um, metric to say, okay, it's clearly valuable that they're using it all the time. Yeah, that that's amazing. I mean, and giving your customers the ability to directly query, access their own data, right, is, is something that provides them a lot of value. Right. So that's that's pretty awesome to see, um, you know, so as you're building and uh, and expanding the capabilities of Seismic, right, what is on the roadmap over the next six to 12 months? Well, that's the thing. Obviously, more data, tons and tons and tons of, of data. We um, one of the initiatives we have for every area of the product, every single thing that actually happens that we're capturing all that data. Um, so that's obviously always on the roadmap. Um, the other one we're actually exploring right now is the um, taking advantage of the data marketplace. Now we can bring all this data into Seismic, but that's going to be a lot of work. If there is a way to leverage, um, I see on the data marketplace, there's both free and, um, uh, and, and, and paid data that we can actually leverage. And that would be great because uh, we actually have connectors directly into um, that live doc um, content automation that I actually showed you. 
that it can actually connect to Snowflake directly. So you can actually drive and customize the data, be it charts and graphs you want to create um, on the fly or um, any other piece of information you actually want to pull. You can do that directly based on um, data in Snowflake, be it in the marketplace or um, in the data that we actually own. So leveraging that, I think it's something interesting. So we're, we're really excited to, to see and explore what we can actually do on that side. Yeah, that's really cool. I know, I know leveraging the Snowflake data marketplace is something that can, that can really expand the insights that you can bring, right? With, with joining the data that you're first, that, that you're creating yourself through your platform and then joining that with other data that you can get on the Snowflake data marketplace. That's awesome. Exactly. So, uh, as you were building this application from the ground up, right? What was the uh, criteria, and how did you actually land on using Snowflake? I know you mentioned, you know, some of the key features of Snowflake that you use, but how how did you actually land on using Snowflake as a core part of your tech stack? Um, yeah, we we looked at a number of different options. I mean, obviously, you look at a lot of cloud vendors today. Everybody has some kind of a database or data warehouse type capability. We looked at um, the capabilities across those um, and how this aligns with, with what we want to do and where we want to go. So one, I think Snowflake solely being focused on this space, not doing a million other things and then um, data being being one piece of it. So I think that was that was important. Um, product functionality, performance, um, the data share actually was, was, was a critical <clears throat> factor for us in terms of how Snowflake does that. The other aspect was um, some of the um, key features in um, things like ODBC and, and leveraging SQL. I mean, this is these are tools and capabilities that everybody has and it's built to almost every product. You can go to any Microsoft product and connect to generate an ODBC data source. So that was, that was huge for us because our customers, we need to make it easy for our customers to leverage that data. Um, so those were some of the, the key features that we kind of looked at um, and ultimately making a decision on it. So like, That's awesome. And so, you know, for our viewers here watching us now, uh, if they want to learn more about Seismic, um, where should they go? Great. So, um, seismic.com, um, as my t-shirt kind of, uh, shows it, uh, you can go in there and, um, check us out. Um, there's ways to contact us, um, on, on the website and, and I encourage you to kind of go to do that. Awesome. And for everybody else watching, if you're looking to build your next application or business on Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. Thanks.